Hello and welcome to your fourth stimulus check update and fourth stimulus package update for Friday, May 14th. Hope you all have a great day and an amazing weekend. Let's jump straight to the news where we're going to cover many stimulus and unemployment updates as well as some other major news. Right after you please hit the like button on the video, it really helps out the channel so thank you so much. So this week has been a busy week in Washington DC. President Biden met with a few GOP senators to talk about the infrastructure bill and see if they can reach a compromise. I'm not sure how they're going to reach a compromise where Biden is proposing a $2.3 trillion plan and the GOP senators proposed a bill that is about one third of that number. So the gap is huge and I don't really think they're going to be able to bridge it. This is all just a show to pretend they're trying to get something done in a bipartisan way, but at the end of the day, my best guess is this will still go through the budget reconciliation route. I don't see anything like this passing with 60 votes in the Senate, but again, this is just my humble opinion after following the stimulus news for over a year now and seeing really how both sides have been playing this game. Let me know in the comments below how you feel about that. But anyway, President Biden told reporters after the meeting, we'll see if we can work out some compromise on infrastructure, and I know they're sincere about it, so am I. He also said it's a genuine effort and I think we'll get there. And when asked if he's prepared to give an offer lower than what he has now, he said he's ready to compromise. The Republicans' offer is at $568 billion, which is very far from the $2.3 trillion and only covers funding for things like roads and bridges, which is considered traditional infrastructure. But the Democrats have funding for other priorities like electric vehicles and other things that will address climate change, research and development, among other things. So again, it will be one of those things where the difference is not really on the dollar value, but on the beliefs. Another meeting that took place on Wednesday with the top four politicians from both sides and Mitch McConnell sounded optimistic about reaching a deal, but I personally have my doubts on that. And Mitch McConnell also said that he would not support undoing the 2017 Trump tax cut bills. Which by the way, Brian from the Clear Value Tax YouTube channel made an awesome video where he calculated how the changes would affect people making under $400,000. And in about 90% of the cases, if not more, people making anywhere from 50,000 to 100,000 a year and more or less will have to pay higher taxes if President Biden reverses the Trump tax cut bill. And the rich will not really get affected that much with uh, things like the high capital gains tax because all they have to do is not sell their assets and just borrow against it. So they won't really be taxed. So please don't fall for the idea that the new tax plans will only affect people making 400,000 and higher. It will affect everyone with all kinds of income ranges. Please do your research and reach out to your politicians demanding not to raise your taxes. Now moving on to news from Nancy Pelosi. We haven't heard from her in a while. And in a virtual event geared to encourage people to file their taxes by May 17th, which is this Monday, she also said that she's happy with the expansion of the child tax credit from $2,000 to $3,000 for children between 6 and 17, and $3,600 for children under 6. And she's even happier that President Biden is proposing to extend it to 2025, but she wants to see it extend permanently. This will be a very expensive proposal at around $650 billion, but child poverty has a greater cost of $800 billion to $1 trillion annually, so she said she sees this as a savings. A huge priority now is ending child poverty, so that's why we're seeing all these proposal and tax credits that are only beneficial to people with child dependence. In unemployment news, yesterday's job claims report set a new pandemic low of 473,000 claims, and we saw little uptick in applications for pandemic unemployment assistance, which is geared for gig workers and the self-employed. But we still have millions of continuing claims every week, and the situation is not looking great, especially when we have governors now ending participation in federal unemployment benefits. This is already taking place in a few states, and I'm sure more will follow follow. In finance news, inflation is on the rise. And for those of you on Social Security, SSI, and SSDI, this is very bad news because your benefits increased only 1.3%, which is nothing compared to the price increase of pretty much everything. The consumer price index rose 0.8% in April and 4.2% year over year. This was the fastest annual rate since a 4.9% jump in September 2008. But I wouldn't get too concerned yet because the year-over-year -year data is a little bit skewed because we had a dramatic dip in prices last year in April and in May. So when we compare year-over-year, -year, the numbers are bad, but I really think it will taper down starting June or July. 
I would get really concerned if the numbers are this bad over the summer, but I really don't think that will be the case. We're also dealing with the gas shortages right now, which is another thing to add to the supply chain issues. So things are just a mess right now. And to add to all of this, Chick-fil-A said they're facing a shortage of its Chick-fil-A sauce due to industry-wide supply chain issues and labor shortages. I mean, come on now, can 2020 get any worse? Let's get it together, people. I can't have a spicy Chick-fil-A sandwich without Chick-fil-A sauce. So that's all I have for you in this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate you all. Please hit the like button on the video, share this video with your friends and family, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And click that notifications bell to be notified whenever I publish new videos and new content for you. Also, get your free stock from Robinhood just by opening an account using the link below. And make sure to check the link for the Yara savings account. It's a savings account that is FDIC insured, but gives you interest with a lottery system. If you use the link below, you'll get 100 tickets when you deposit as little as $25 for a chance to win up to $10 million. Then you'll get a weekly ticket for every $25 you deposit. Finally, don't forget to get your free stocks from Mebel when you deposit only $100, which is just like cash. You can take it out anytime you feel like it. All the links are in the description below. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next video.